Hello everyone, I'm Isaiah Cartwright and we're going to be going over the engineer today. Uh, we kind of have a, a new setup and uh, con you know continuing to improve our whole streaming thing. So uh, today we're going to go over uh, the engineer and mainly the engineer in PVE, uh, but that kind of spills over to uh, World v. World and PVP and uh, sometimes. So. Um, I'm going to be really going over kind of three main different archetypes for ways to play the engineer. Uh, and one of the big things is a lot of the things, uh, builds that I'm going to go over really don't work while you're leveling up an engineer um, because a lot of the engineers, uh, some of the abilities really rely on some things deep in the trait line. Um, and so really when you're leveling up an engineer, um, you can work towards some of these builds, but sometimes you're going to do some different uh, directions or areas on, on these builds or these setups. Uh, and so just keep that in mind as you're leveling up. Um, I think one of the big first things that I would say about the engineer when you're looking at it is he's really got two very dominant utility skills that really drive a lot of the builds. Um, there's basically the bomb kit, um, which involves a lot more moving around, dropping bombs, um, large AOEs and that type of thing. And then you have the grenade kit, um, which allows for kind of ranged uh, AOEs. And both of those are really uh, an important toolbox to use in uh, the way you're going to play your engineer. And so some builds many builds will run both of them in, in different ways and so um, but you know I'm gonna go through the different things that just those are really key ones that I would pick out as uh, things to to build around because they're, they're really solid um, for weapons, uh, you know, the real big thing, he's kind of has a smaller list of weapons because a lot of his kits and things add to his overall arsenal. Um, you have basically a, the rifle, uh, which is a little bit more power focused than anything else. Uh, has some good movement. Uh, one thing that I like to use the rifle for um, is when I'm trying to do jumping puzzles and there's some harder jumps, uh, the number five skull on the rifle can, can make some th things a lot easier. Um, and so uh, rifles, uh, has a bunch of builds. It usually plays a lot more into your power builds and, and raw and raw damage. Um, your pistol. Uh, pistol is uh, a lot more focused on kind of uh, rapid small shots and has a lot more condition application. Um, you know, you can get quite a bit from confusion, poison, and bleeds uh, through the, the rifle, or I mean, through pistol. And uh, then you can kind of mix and match that with either another pistol, oh, wrong one, either another pistol um, to get you, uh, you know, uh, get you cripple and burning and so those are things or which I think has been usually my favorite is the shield uh, because it comes with another blast finisher um, and so moving those around you can kind of get some different options among those but usually pistol builds go a little bit more condition damage and rifle builds go more power damage um, as for power builds um, I kind of like to run this in kind of two different uh, flavors there's usually I like to focus a little bit more around knight's gear for PvE um, you know you get that kind of higher toughness that power and then I run berserkers uh, trinkets uh, this gets you kind of a really solid amount of damage for when you're running the power builds um, and you can kind of run power builds with both bomb kits or grenades those things uh, drive a lot and then it's really kind of how you want to support from that moment on um, another real uh, important thing on those builds is you can kind of go between all different of your heals uh, with your engineer with uh, many of the different builds they, they have a lot of strengths and weaknesses and sometimes it comes down to a little bit of personal uh, preference between those I mean you get the the healing turret which uh, you know really really high healing has uh, a water field allows you to kind of uh, use your blast finishers to get extra healing that can be really great for support builds it can be really great for uh, keeping yourself alive and tanky and all those types of things you get uh, med pack which med packs heal kind of comes up on the F1 skill, which can be a real big advantage because when you go deep into the tools line, uh, you know, just grab something here real quick, you can see it reduces its recharge. So you get, you know, some extra benefit and you can get a, a faster heal that way. Uh, one of the big things when I'm doing that is I usually rebind the F1 key to, I use F for my heal. And, um, but when you switch over to this, it can be sometimes disorienting to get used to pushing F1 to do the heal rather than the kit swap, which will bring you to uh, the things that the med kit package does. Um, so for the power builds, there's a couple different flavors of ways that I like to go with the power builds um, uh, trait wise. Really kind of the, one of the fun ones for me and uh, is the HDH build, um, which is can really allow you to use your elixirs, kind of what I had set up here, um, to uh, increase the amount of might uh, that you have. And one of the real key factors of that might is it's a really long might. And so you can get a lot of uh, kind of um, might that builds up over time. Um, I really like to run that personally with the uh, Noble uh, rune set. Um, 
or uh, when I'm running the condition damage style uh, because it gets you the might uh, builders. But you can also run kind of stack three, two sets to just get might or push the the uh, boon duration on the builds. And you can really just get to where you're running around with large stacks of might all the time. Um, and so that's one of the really, really fun flavors. Um, you know, you also have, uh, you can go towards uh, grenades a lot heavier. Um, and, you know, there's kind of a couple different grenade traits. Uh, one that will allow you to kind of throw them farther and have a bigger AOEs. And then you can reduce their um, the recharge with like short fuse. Those types of things I think are really key in, you know, getting maximum use out of the grenade kit. You know, the grenade kit ends up having um, lots of different uh, uh, things that it can do, but you can get a lot of damage um, just being able to throw out you know, using your one and two skill. And you can get some really big spikes with barrage and other things like that, um, which is some of the big things that I like to do with grenade kit. So, you know, you can really focus in a lot of that damage. Um, with uh, Rifle and pistol, you know, pistol actually, you could, you'll use a lot of the times, even when you're doing a power build, um, it's really good, especially because you can spend a lot of time in your kits. Uh, you know, the pistol can be really good for pulling uh, creatures or doing that types of stuff. And you can pick up some things that'll make your um, explosive shot pierce, and, or you know, all your pistol shots will pierce, but your pistol explosive shot will get a lot of AOEs on creatures. And so you can get some good damage um, when you're in between uh, your kits and different things that way. Um, you know, rifle has some really large bursts especially with um, the number five skill can really get you some bigger hits uh, all at once. And so depending on whether you're trying to set up kind of a really bursty attack um, or whether you're trying to do some more sustained can really change how you're going to use that initial weapon setup. Um, as for sigils for going your weapons, you know, um, I think one of the things I really like to do with the engineer is he swaps weapons a lot. And so you can really um, uh, take charge of that lower cooldown on those swaps uh, comparatively because every time you're swapping in and out of kits and things can trigger some of the swap um, systems. So stuff like Sigil of Battle when you're running kind of that uh, HGH setup or trying to stack large stacks of might, um, you know, those types of things. I even like trying out some Geomancy and sometimes on them, giving that swap to get some extra bleeds when I'm pushing more Akondi damage build, those those types of areas. Um, good old Sigil of Force, really strong here. Um, one of the reasons I do like to run Pistol Shield uh, on the power build even is it gives you two sigil slots, um, which can be really important to just maximizing your overall damage output. Um, when it comes to uh, an another build is kind of Condi damage. Um, there's a couple different ways to go. You, HDH works just fine with Condi damage too. You know, you get a lot of that. You get just as much con uh, Condi damage from Might as you do power. And so it can really uh, bolster up your damage in much different ways. Uh, you know, the Rabid Armor set, uh, I think, always kind of shines here for the best one to use. Um, it allows you to kind of take that Might and use it for, I mean, the Condition Damage user toughness and the Rune of Undead is always really good for kind of maximizing your total uh, attribute efficiency here. Um, um, but there's a couple other ways that you can run um, the Condi damage too. Uh, you can run the new Dire set, which I think is really, really strong. It's good. Uh, gets you more defense and puzzlings. I like to put the scavenging rune in there. It gets you some high Condi damage and then it converts uh, vitality instead of toughness from the undead set. And uh, that can, because you're also getting vitality from the dire set, it can be really good and adds a little bit more lifesteal. So those are overall are really two good setups for just cranking up the Condi damage. Um, with Condi damage, you got, uh, there's a couple different things. Sometimes you can build for really high um, uh, confusion stacking by jumping between a bunch of different kits. You know, uh, your toolkit has a really good amount of, it's more single target, and then, you know, you can bounce around between your other kits and even, uh, you know, shooting your static shot and really stack up a large amount of uh, confusion. Um, it's not always the best thing in PvE because monsters attack really slow. Um, so, you know, you can focus more on your burns and your bleeds and things like that. When you are running the Condi damage build, I think one of the um, big things that the engineer has over a lot of people is he's got some really good procs. Uh, and so if you get uh, incendiary um, up here in uh, uh, explosives line, that can add a lot of to procs. Plus your five in the firearms gets you a proc. Plus when you get your sigils going, you can really stack up the procs with the engineer, which makes precision really important and um, can really allow you to just passively in all the things that you're doing, uh, continue to roll on the amount of total conditions that 
you can apply. Um, this becomes really important when you're running that build because in PVE you need to be able to output lots and lots of conditions for your really the condition build to stack up. You know, when you're leveling up, um, I usually like to try to focus on the power builds. Uh, they're just a little bit easier to run through when leveling, and you'll run into situations where conditions don't work as well. And so I like to focus a lot more on the power builds while leveling up. But um, those are kind of two real solid gear setups um, for doing the condition damage and running those different things. Um, one of the kind of fun builds that I, that I see people playing around with is a, a little bit more support uh, styled uh, engineer, which can use the apothecary set, which has a high healing power, and you can run the runes of altruism. I can never say that word properly, um, but those things really allow you to um, throw out a lot of healing. You kind of go from maxing out your healing power. You can run your water fields so that you can blast out some healing. Uh, you can run elixir gun. Elixir gun gets a, a big heal, and you can kind of go through the different toolkits and bits and make these uh, just a nice array of back-to-back -back, uh, healing skills. Uh, which can really output a large amount of healing in a short period of time. Um, one of the big ones that I think to doing that is running the bomb heal, um, which uh, every time you uh, use a bomb, so we can remember what number it is. Um, oh, sorry, wrong line. Um, up here in Inventions uh, gets you the bomb heal, and that one can make it so that when you're dropping bombs, you're also healing, uh, which can really add to the total amount of healing going. Plus, going down the Inventions line, um, you get extra healing. So you kind of really double, triple stack the healing. Um, some couple ways to kind of take advantage of that, especially food-wise. Um, there's kind of some mango ice cream, which will convert your uh, vitality and toughness into healing power. And this allows you to get um, multiple uh, kind of um, uh, conversions from that, whether you're running a Connie damage build. Now with, uh, with the healing build, I do like to go Apothecary because you get um, the condition damage as well. And condition damage can really allow you to get a decent amount of damage while you're doing that kind of support build. Um, and so you can, you can kind of mix those things together. Um, and that really changes how you're going to use um, some of your um, your food. For the power builds, I uh, didn't kind of go over the rune setups. Um, you know, I think there's kind of the the simplest, easiest is knights and some divinity type of gear. Not everyone can always afford divinity. It's usually really expensive. In fact, most of these um, power build rune sets are used by a lot of people, and so they're quite a bit uh, more expensive to acquire. So you can always default to some ruby orbs um, until you can kind of get some of the better setups. Um, but you kind of have a couple different flavors for whether you want to go ogres, um, which I think is a really well-rounded damage set, um, or you go divinities, which can do good depending on if you're running a pistol main hand and you're still power set, just to increase yourself a little bit. Um, when you're going, like I was talking about with scavenging and undead, uh, the other one that I like to run is noble, uh, especially when I'm running the HDH set. Um, it just continues to stack on the might so that extra might duration, you can get, you know, close to near 100% uh, might duration increase, which makes your HDH last like 40 seconds uh, if you max that whole thing out, um, which can be crazy because you're getting some faster recharges thrown around um, your elixirs from your toss, which gets might, and you also get um, might from using them. So you can really keep yourself at just giant stacks of might while running around, which can be really fun to just get the high numbers. Um, and from the support builds, usually Altruism is one of the better ones. Um, I like the being able to spread Might and Fury and those types of things. There's a couple other sets that you can use that can give um, a little bit more regeneration and different things like that. But you already kind of um, splash some of those boons out uh, depending on how your setup uh, it goes. Um, when it comes to utility skills, you know, I kind of like I already covered with the bomb kit and grenade kit, you can really kind of interweave a handful of these things for all kinds of different builds and change up a utility skill here or there to, to fit your situation. I really like Elixir S. Um, it's kind of the get out of jail free card and it, and it kind of comes in two flavors of get out of jail. You can use the stealth side of it to get out of uh, jail, especially in PvE. It can be really good to disengage. Um, and then the uh, shrinking yourself and just kind of total immunity immunity can be really good to just 
getting a couple dodges, running away, get, getting out of uh, out of out of there, um, and so uh, all those kind of things can combine uh, really well to, together. And you know, it can be used in the HGH build. It can be used in kind of any layering of those things. When you're leveling up, uh, one trick that I do use, like to use sometimes is to throw in uh, a thumper turret here or there when I'm having a hard time with a, a boss or something that's targeting me, because you can get it to take aggro uh, and allow you a little bit more time to dodge around or heal up or, or sustain especially when you're by yourself and, and you don't have other people to kind of to cover you in those rings. Uh, when you are running with some of the more of the support builds, you often become the tank and uh, it can be really hard to kill. Just running around and dodging, dropping bombs that are healing everyone. Um, it can, it, you can really keep yourself going for a long time um, the way you have the, that kind of stuff set up. Um, another uh, a big bit is when you're doing the Condi damage build, kind of the best that you can get is the pizza. Uh, that extra 40% duration uh, on, on all your conditions can be really add up. And so I like to run that a lot of times. Um, and you know the tuning crystal to, to really convert the extra toughness that you're getting either from Rabid or Dire um, and the vitality that you just naturally start with. And depending on what line you're going in, um, those things can really add up to getting you a lot of extra. Um, you can also run uh, maintenance oil to get you more precision, especially because you use a lot of procs uh, depending on which build you're going on, but even in the power build, sometimes you'll pick up those procs just because the overall damage that you're adding can uh, to be there, and, and you're often in, you know, the explosive line picking up extra things to make your grenades hit harder and things like that. Um, you can also just run when you're doing the power builds the straight up power and crit damage, uh, and really trying to maximize crit damage to get da uh, to get your total damage output up. Um, the butternut squash soup, the best there is when it comes to going that round. Um, and it's one of the ones that, usually this is where I like to do when I'm running power. Um, some other fun things when you're doing um, the condo damage, like I said, you got your mango ice cream if you wanna just try to max out that healing power stat. Um, but you can also run, um, some of the saffron scented poultry soup. Uh, it really triggers a removal whenever you use a heal skill. It's got a fairly low cooldown, and because your heal skill often has like a really low cooldown, um, uh, then depending on if you go like a heal kit or something like that, you can really maximize uh, the total amount of um, uh, healing and removal and things that you can get uh, with that with that uh, piece of food. Um, but it doesn't really work out as much unless I think you're running that healing power build or, or trying to uh, focus on some of those areas. Um, sharpening stones, uh, always really solid option when you're trying to go power. Um, and so, you know, you can really, depending on where you're going, get a lot of benefit out of your different food options uh, and different directions. Um, and so uh, going down to elite skills, um, I really like Supply Crate. Uh, it takes a lot to really pull me away from Supply Crate. It really can give you a lot of different options. Uh, you know, it drops a bunch of different things. The net turret in it is really solid. Um, Elixir X, when you're doing the HDH build, sometimes you really want to go with uh, Elixir X. I usually don't because often I'll, I'll, once you use it, you're in a place where um, you're either in a tornado or you're rampaging around and it doesn't really take advantage of the fact that you have like really high might stacks. Um, I do kind of like using those things in worldview world when I'm trying to break up or kick people out of a, a, a circle so sometimes when I'm being defensive I'll throw those out but I, I just it's hard to pull me away from supply crate it's it's usually my favorite. Um, there's a lot of fun tricks with getting mortar um, and, and doing some distance but I find setting up um, uh, while I'm in PVE is just not as useful as being mobile and running around. Um, and so I, I like Supply Crate for that. Um, some other options is you have Elixir R, um, which can uh, get you all kinds of uh, better reviving and um, get your endurance back and things, things like that. It's gonna be a really fun set um, to bounce around. Uh, I really like being able to the kind of support feel that you get out of it. And, and just dodging is really important, especially when you're using the bomb set because you're in a, a lot up closer and you're really trying to time out those bombs and you want to dodge around a whole lot. And so I think those things have a lot of synergy uh, when, they're, when they're going together. Um, some other fun things, when you're just kind of running from place to place, you can get real good at using um, you know, your rocket
rocket boots and your rifle and you know dodging around those things can be really key to getting around but really the best and like it's once you start using it it's just hard to get away from is speedy kits um, being able to just permanently keep up the swiftness by swapping back and forth between your kits while running around um, it's it's almost required once you get sucked into it I mean there's a couple other ways for you to get swiftness um, like with sigils or with a rune set um, those things can also work depending on how you're set up but I just like to go speedy kits you always kind of want to go a little bit into tools in my mind because uh, just getting your tool uh, skills lowered is really nice um, kind of like the Ellie you're gonna use your f1 skills a lot and so like I was kind of saying with the healing um, I really like to try to look around for different binds or how to fit those into just faster using keys uh, the F1 keys can be a little bit cumbersome to use while moving sometimes, and a lot of the um, skills that you'll have will be ground targeted and things like that. So um, really try to find a good bind set that um, you can use really quickly, because a lot of the way the engineer is going to play is you're going to be swapping back and forth between whether it's kits or heals or you know dropping your healing turret so you can pick it up quickly. There's all these kind of really fast actions that you want to do to maximize all the different uh, things that you can do. And so really making sure that you have a solid set of binds for your character and how you're going to use them can can really change your overall output a lot um, so and as for your traits, you know, I kind of um, hit some of the, the bigger traits that you use here or there, but uh, there's a lot of different flavors of the way you can kind of mix those things around. Um, one thing that I really like um, is the inventions line when you want to be really toughness or support you. Like I said, it comes with both healing power and toughness, which have some really strong synergy together. So, um, and that's where you usually get your bomb uh, line. You can get a lot of damage um, when you want to go with the power lines. You want to go more in your tools line. You get your crit damage you get some of those other areas and you get your explosives and things like that um, to really crank up your raw power uh, you know when you are doing like the, the power builds you really want to focus on dropping um, a lot more of the raw damage um, things you know one of the big bits of how you kind of mix between a lot of these different utility skills is you'll kind of use a couple skills on each kit and swap between those kits in different ways to really maximize the amount of time that you spend doing something um, and like when you're in PvP and you go to grab some monsters and you know you can get really good at setting up the timing on your bomb kit so that the bombs will blow up right as your monsters are getting there or so that you're spending less time just trying to dodge around or moving around to keep uh, away from those monsters so this kind of here's a quick overview of uh, you know the, in the engineer you know there's lots of different builds out there um, but these are just some some good ones to get you going and so uh, thanks everyone for coming by and listening to the engineer um, and uh, you know, coming up, we have uh, a, a ready up thing at two o'clock specific time. So uh, make sure you uh, come and watch us. So thanks so much for listening. Talk to you later.